Good day. So this is a new video on the subject of DHS taking people's children and the false ways that they use to make that happen. So I think this is the fifth video in a series. And today I am going to talk about a number of things, but I'm going to start out specifically with this video by its name being about attorney Matthew Jarvis of Dallas, Oregon. Now, back in December of 2017, Matthew Jarvis was signed as my court appointed attorney. And our six children were taken into foster care. Matthew said, well, the jurisdictional trial coming up is no big deal. It's not really important. Well, now we're five years and four months later, and two of our children are still in foster care. The others have all aged out and returned home. And two of our children are still in foster care, and there is the process of changing the plan to adoption. And so obviously the jurisdictional trial is very important. So today I filed a complaint with the Oregon State Bar against Matt Jarvis because I have gathered information as to how the system works or is supposed to work and how Matthew Jarvis dealt with it and continues to be an attorney, continues to live the good life while we deal with the consequences of his inadequate counsel and negligence. So in December 2017, and I'm going to read you the bar complaint. In December 2017, Matthew Jarvis was appointed as my court-appointed lawyer in Dallas, Polk County, Oregon, in a family law case and in a criminal case. The criminal case was ultimately dismissed. In the juvenile case, six of my and my wife's children were taken into temporary foster care. There was an upcoming jurisdictional hearing regarding the children on January 31st and February 1st, 2018. Now, this is two days, just two days to go over significant information and take your kids. Or not. Matthew Jarvis told me that the jurisdictional hearing is not important. It certainly is important. It's life-changing. It's an incredible tragedy for a family. A witness had made accusations that were impossible and had gone to Liberty House for an exam and interview. There are photos and videos taken at those exams and interviews. We requested those materials from DHS Dallas and Liberty House. Matt Jarvis did not get those videos or photos in time for the jurisdictional trial. <clears throat> the photos and video were highly exculpatory. At the trial, a doctor from Liberty House, specifically Stacy Headland, who now works in McMinnville, testified that the witness had, quote, innumerable scarring consistent with torture. As I have mentioned, this was impossible. Since she knew we did not have the photos, she knew she could get away with this, and, with this testimony in this kangaroo court. Judge Norm Hill was presiding. Matt Jarvis was not concerned, and Judge Norm Hill used Stacy Headland's testimony under oath to take jurisdiction of all six of our children. Now it is five years and four months later, and two of our children are still in foster care, and the state now rules that the plan should be changed to adoption. Since January 2018, I have discovered that Matthew Jarvis was supposed to compel Liberty House and DHS to produce the photos for the jurisdictional trial, which he failed to do. At that time, in May of 2018, another lawyer compelled Liberty House to produce the photos. The photos showed no such scarring of the witness. I repeat, the photos showed no such scarring of the witness. Stacy Headland was also called to the stand to be asked about the photos we now had in our possession that showed that her testimony was false. However, Judge Norm Hill and DOJ attorney Brian Raymer blocked my attorney from asking Stacy Headland any questions. Objection sustained. Objection sustained. And so it went. As a result of Matthew Jarvis failing to compel Liberty House 
to present the photos, which were highly exculpatory in time for the jurisdictional trial, our six children were remanded into state custody for years. Obviously, contrary to what Matt Jarvis claimed, the jurisdictional trial was of the utmost importance and has caused great harm to our children and family. Meanwhile, Matt Jarvis goes on living the high life at the expense of us peasants. Now, I want to talk about this, but I also want to talk about attorneys in the system in general. Uh, basically, the attorneys are all a club. The court, CASA, the attorneys, they're all a club. You win some, you lose some. This attorney gets it this time, I get it the next time. We help each other out. We all have a beer together. We all make jokes during breaks at the trial. Uh, it's all the good old boys, okay? Out-of-county attorneys are not liked, okay? So in one case, they may be fighting to keep somebody's children away from DHS. In another case, they're fighting to make sure that DHS keeps the children. It means nothing to the attorneys, absolutely nothing. It's just the money they make off it, okay? <clears throat> so the judge knows this. It's all arbitrary. It's all ping pong with the judge. And the attorneys know this, okay? So Matt Jarvis basically threw me my wife and our six children under the bus because he didn't give a damn. Now, I, I clarify why this is so important. When the little pencil neck lawyer, Steve Walls, goes in the court claiming that he wants a hearing for regarding a review of permanency, which was always reunification, he gets two weeks. Judge Norm Hill hands him two weeks to play that game, make money for the court, make money for all the lawyers, make money for everybody, like a cash cow. But the most important case in court that ever happened was the jurisdictional trial, which was only two days. Now, this was also the, the trial in which Matt Jarvis, unbeknownst to me and without my consent, dismissed all my witnesses that contradicted the accuser. So this is all just business to these people. And uh, you should be aware of that in dealing with your attorney. Don't be afraid to file a complaint with the bar. It may not do any specific good in the short term, but it does go as part of the public record, just like this video. And so Stacy Hedlund, we, myself and another attorney, after we dismissed Matt Jarvis, we got the photos that showed the witness was lying. And we subpoenaed Stacy Hedlund, the cross-examiner. She did not answer the subpoena, and when we asked what was to be done about it, Judge Norm Hill said basically nothing. We said, don't you get arrested if you don't answer a subpoena? And Judge Norm Hill said, and I quote, we don't do that here. And that's in the record, okay? So finally, we subpoenaed her again. Six months later, she did show up, and then it was agreed that Brian Raymer, the DOJ attorney, would say objection. He wouldn't say what his objection was, just objection. And Judge Hill would blurt out, sustained. My attorney asked about five or six questions, got the same handling from the DOJ and the judge. And so he finally said, there's nothing more I can do. Now, possibly he could have fi filed a claim for inadequate counsel at that time, but it didn't happen. Now, we appealed because we had these photos and the basis was that we had new discovery. Judge Hill said, well, the photos existed. You didn't get them tough luck, so no retrial. Okay, see how that works? Real slick. They are afraid of exculpatory evidence. All right, they're dirty, completely dirty. So 
This is how the lawyers operate. The children mean absolutely nothing to the lawyers. The families mean nothing to the lawyers. It's all about the money. The judge, the lawyers are all in a club. The families are not in that club. Okay? So be aware of that when dealing with your attorney. And this is just one of the events that we coped with in this case. Now, you get attorneys that are useless. They won't do their job. They have no spine. Obviously, they don't care about the ethics of all of it. They just, you know, they go in there, limp it into the court and, you know, say, oh, this and oh, that. And so I asked my one attorney, I said, why is it that for a jurisdictional trial, it gets railroaded through and then for a simple permanency hearing, the attorney asks for two weeks and gets it. How's that? All right. And so he said, well, you know, the jurisdictional trial, that book's closed. That's in stone. You can't change that. Blah, blah, blah. So basically saying when the court lies and when the attorneys lie, and when DHS lies, that's all written in stone and that gets protected. That's what he said to me. And so uh, that's how it goes along. And so everything's in favor of the state and DHS. They can lie. They can do anything they want and get away with it for the most part. Okay. You know, maybe uh, things keep these people awake at night certainly should when the fees come due for the life they've lived to get their filthy lucre so i'm rem reminded of another case another situation in our case where the witness stated that my wife forced her to recant by cutting her hair. And she was asked where her hair was cut to. She said, up to here, cut my hair up to here. And that finally forced me to recant my accusations. So another attorney, mostly completely useless, um, Martin Habakos, he went to her and showed her photos and said, is this you? She said, yes. And he noted for the court that those were time-stamped photos <clears throat> from the same time and after of when she claimed her hair was cut, that her mother cut her hair. This shows she was lying. And you know what Judge Norm Hill said? And it's in the transcript. He said, I'm going to rule I'm going to make up, make believe. I'm going to create facts. I'm going to rule that her mother did cut her hair. He's got photos in front of him that are still in the exhibit in the case that shows that at that time and immediately after, her hair was not cut. But he determines, he creates the facts and then he rules on the facts that he's created. I'm going to rule that her mother cut her hair. Didn't happen. Photos showed that it didn't happen. Doesn't matter. This is all make up the facts as you've gone as you go along. Now, in my last hearing in the court, I stated very frankly that the court was going to rule what the court was going to rule. And it didn't matter what the facts were. It didn't matter what I or anybody else had to say. 
the court was going to rule what the court was going to rule. So the case gets moved out of Judge Hill's court because apparently our, our statement is that we will not get a fair hearing in Judge Hill's court, which of course was obvious. We never did. It was all about creating creating facts, if you can call it that, and then ruling on those created facts that in fact they don't don't even exist, but you just make believe that they exist. And then you condemn people's lives, you condemn the lives of children, you put children in purgatory for over five years on fictitious facts that you've created to go with the narrative and blocked out all the exculpatory information that you can. So nobody ever has to apologize for being wrong and rigging the game. And the whole thing's rigged, completely rigged. The judicial system in America is rigged and the juvenile courts are rigged. And you would be unwise to expect fairness you get a judge who is impartial and rules according to the law based on facts, not created facts, but real facts, consider yourself lucky. So we appealed on a number of these things. Technicalities were used to throw out the appeals. And People know lies were told. What's really interesting to me, you know, there's books and commentary on the banality of evil. What's really interesting to me is that caseworkers like Aubrey Havercost, like Sarah Scott, I think maybe she has two names because she's runs under two names, Sarah Pickett. Um, they operate, abuse your family, abuse your children, and then they go off and have these lives where they have children and grandchildren and everything is happy and people don't know what kind of people they really are what they're willing to do to other people's children. Now, the foster mom, she has decided to believe the lies of DHS, Dallas, Polk County, Oregon, the lies of the caseworkers, lies of people like Jacqueline Nix, and take away attempt to take away and adopt two children that don't belong to her so she can sit in a pew at Monmouth Christian Church and pretend she's goody-goody two-shoes and that everything's okay. Nothing's okay. Nothing's okay for those two little children. Nothing's okay for our family until they're returned and her and Steve Walls and DHS and the judge and the court are under the impression that by adopting these two little kids out, they will just close in the whole thing. It'll all go away and be fine. And all the documentation on this kind of thing knows absolutely that it'll never be fine. So apparently the foster moms are very naive person who just has no clue about that. She thinks that our little boy and our little girl are going to forget they have a farm, brothers and sisters, a family that loves them. And that's just going to disappear. And then they won't have any problems. And Steve Walls always stands up there, the little prick, and says, oh, these children need permanency. The only thing they're going to have for permanency is trauma. 
okay? Well, Steve Walls got divorced, tried to smash our family, smashed his own family, got divorced. Natalie Walls, yeah. Wonder what that was all about. But what goes wrong comes wrong, huh? Karma, karma, bitch. It's a karma. And so uh, this is uh, video number five about Matt Jarvis and the other scumbags that work for the government and take people's children and lie and cover up the truth. There's a lot of ships that have sailed and uh, but it doesn't change the facts and it doesn't change what DHS, Dallas Oregon, Aubrey Havacos, Sarah Scott, Jacqueline Nix, what all these people, uh, Stacy Headland, Stacy Doshner, who was there at DHS Dallas. She's the lady who said she'd like to throat punch somebody. She's still getting over a hundred thousand dollars a year wherever they've hidden her in the DHS catacombs, drawing her over a hundred thousand. You know, that's interesting. What this is all about is you do the nasty stuff for the state, you know, and uh, it's just about getting a pay raise. So I've watched Aubrey Havercost's pay go up by the year. Started out, I think, in the 30,000 range, 35, 36,000. Now it's 59,000. That's what you get, Aubrey. You screw people's families over and terrorize their children, cause all kinds of grief and tragedy, and then you get a bigger paycheck. Well, try spending that paycheck in hell, you know? So see how that works out for you. And, you know, your daughter's like a, month away from our young little daughter you know sarah scott's got a grandson about the same age as our eight-year-old son what happens to our eight-year-old son doesn't matter to her though okay you can run but you can't hide you can't hide from all this that you've written in the stone of your life that you can't delete. And uh, so we were in court and we see this all going on. And uh, it's a lot to think about. But there's little bits of hope. Our children know where the farm is, how to get there. And we will persevere and we will continue to expose the crimes of the individuals involved. So I filed this bar complaint against Matthew Jarvis, inadequate counsel. Now I'll throw in here that my wife's attorney was Gary Hamilton. He came out of the shoot like a horse on the run, made really good points, and then he went dead like a phone line that got cut all right didn't do anything for six months so my wife fired him i mean you don't push back you don't defend your client you don't do anything you just go dead on it how do you how do you how do you justify that he was asked repeatedly, how does the translator working for DHS get to be in on your conversations with the client, the same translator? How come you're not doing anything about it? And I said that Judge Norm Hill violated his oath of office for allowing such a bastard situation to exist in this court. Okay? Don't these people think that anybody outside Polk County is watching? that anybody knows who these little two little children are and what's being done to them, that they don't think that people don't know who the foster family is. They don't know all the details and how this is being snow jobbed to make it look like these two little children don't have any parents that love them or care for them. And uh, my wife told the court, 
give me back my two little kids. And if anything goes wrong, you take them. And they just go and say, no, we're going to take them anyway. So we're really not interested in giving them back under any conditions. We just, we just want to steal people's kids. Okay. Well, I don't know if you ever read Dante's Inferno, but I'm sure there's a level in there for people like that at DHS, for these lawyers, for all these people involved in doing this type of stuff. For the trauma to those little kids, very well documented. It's very well documented, the trauma that's done to foster kids, but we'll survive and we'll make sure that it continues to be exposed who all these scumbags are, and what they've done, the lies they've told, just absolute scum of the earth. Protect your family. The government's not going to protect you. The lawyers aren't going to protect you. Take care of your kids. Get them the things they need. Work long hours. Pay the bills. Don't do drugs. Don't do alcohol. Solve your differences between your spouses. Be good to your kids, you know? So I hope that in your situation, everything works out for you. Never quit fighting and never forget a single name of anybody who took the opportunity to harm you or your kids in this scam that DHS runs. Have a good evening.